Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and this is part two of Offensive or Defensive. While many in the alternative media who claim to be patriots continue to attack what is going on in Burns, Oregon, many others are being misinformed by mainstream media and others are searching for truth. In part one, I clearly established and showed on video how the Bureau of Land Management has been terrorizing people not only in and around Burns, Oregon, but the Bureau of Land Management has been doing this across the nation to many people and it must be stopped. So what I am going to do is I'm going to use a compilation of citizens that you are not seeing in the mainstream media. A compilation of those citizens in which the sheriff claims don't exist. A compilation of those citizens who actually confront the sheriff because of his false information and his trickery in order to make it look as if the people of Burns, Oregon do not support the Patriots. I want you to make this decision for yourself and I want you to make this decision being informed. Not because some YouTube channel tells you to, not because I tell you to, and not because some mainstream media political pundit tells you to. I want you to be able to make your own decision, an informed decision, as to whether or not you support what the Patriots are doing in Burns, Oregon. As you will see, one of the reasons for the massive corruption, for the massive attack upon the Patriots that is going on right now is simply because they're exposing corruption to the deepest levels of the local government leading all the way up to state and federal. The time is now to choose which side you will stand on because today is the day that history is being made and in that history book it will show what, sti what side you stood upon. One of the things I would like to address is originally the Oath Keepers put out the letter for the Harney County Committee of Safety claiming that there was a unanimous vote for the Bundys and the Patriots to leave. This was incorrect information and since then Stuart Rhodes has corrected that information. However, I believe it is important for you to see the part of the video of which Stuart Rhodes did not place to my knowledge, on his site. Oh. I hope we can get through this. We arrange the furniture and be like Tim. First of all, thank you all for coming. This is very important to all of us as Harney County residents. I have been on this committee as long as the rest of them have been, and I am the worst speaker, so bear with me. <coughs> As a committee, we came together and drew up a letter to ask Ammon Bundy to <coughs> leave the refuge. We came together with the letter, and we agreed with the letter that we devised. But we, not all of us agreed to when it should be delivered. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Melody 
and she's going to read you the letter. And thank you again for coming. Okay. So I wanted to show you that part. We've all seen the letter that was read. Uh, I will include links to each one of these videos that I am doing. However, I wanted to make it clear that the misinformation that the Harney County Committee of Safety has asked the Patriots to leave is not accurate. Three voted yes and three voted no. And the reason for that was they did not want this to go away. They want the corruption to leave and they are afraid if the Patriots leave that it will just go back to being the same old same old. Here is another gentleman who is a Harney County resident and I am going to let you hear from him about the abuses that the Bureau of Land Management and putting him out of business has done to him. These are videos that you obviously are not going to see on the mainstream media and nor are you going to see from many of the so-called keyboard patriots. That's great. What's your name? Dwayne. Dwayne, I was just coming over there to, uh, to show that because everyone um, and, and here's the thing, it's not like it's, uh, it's being hidden that, that, uh, that there's people that are supportive or it's being made up. The bottom line is, don't you agree that most people uh, that are ranchers, they have something at stake. It's difficult for them to come out and to speak well, out publicly. Here's the other thing that people uh, don't understand. There's cattle to feed, there's dogs to feed, there's horses to feed, there's ice to break, there's hay to be hauled, there's equipment that meet, need your inch on their fences. And, and we in our opinion if we're standing here like this it's not accomplishing anything yeah that's right now, if we've got everything done all right let's throw in a load of wood run out there we'll drop it off and we'll visit i came out here monday about lunchtime i stopped for lunch i came out hung around for about two hours visited and went back to work there you go and that's what most of the locals are going to do right but you're we've all got a lot of stuff vested in the area that's right i mean i have to deal with them right and i've had real bad you know, I run a, <clears throat> I raise and train dogs, guide hunters. I run a coyote hunting competition here. Hmm. In the BLM Do you really? Came, no, I did. Yeah, okay. Until I lost to the animal terrorist in court, it cost me $15,000. Oh, jeez, wow. But the BLM kept calling me and making threatening phone calls. Well, if you have this coyote hunt, you can't get your special use permits to guide hunters on federal ground. Mm. You can't go on Forest Service. You can't go on BLM. Wow. You know what? I told them, they said, you have to tell your participants they're not allowed to hunt on BLM or Forest Service. Huh. I said, as a private citizen of the United States, I am not telling them that. And if you want to tell them that, you come to the meeting and you tell them that. Yeah, right. I refuse. Mm. They said, well, if you get caught on federal ground, you're going to jail. I said, well, you just as well cuff me and take me right now. And they, they keep referring to it as the, the federal ground, federal mm -hmm. land, federal. Do you think and it's 100% mm -hmm. legal to hunt? I paid my taxes, I paid my hunting license. Mm -hmm. You, me, you, anybody here that has a valid hunting license can go on BLM ground and hunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. But they said, oh, you can't because we've got 15,000 emails in opposition to your coyote hunting contest. Oh, wow. And then when the animal terrorist out of California sued me in district court, mm -hmm. I had 200 local ranchers. Mm -hmm. We went to the courthouse, 200 ranchers, and I walked right through the middle of them. How would you like to be an animal terrorist in California? Could you imagine? That had to walk that gauntlet, and everyone yeah. was polite, and they walked up there, and what it ended up was I just couldn't hire lawyers anymore. I ran out of money. You did. Yeah. But, so I'm well aware of what the government and that's does. The, uh... <clears throat> it needs to be locally controlled. Yeah. And guys like it us, does. we're just we're here trying to make a living. We don't need the government making it harder. Mm -hmm. But all these guys are away from their families. They're here standing up 
for us. They're the ones that will benefit from right. this whole fiasco. Would you would you say I've been hearing this term a lot and and also saying it a lot lately that right now we really need to consider that especially with the, what the Bundys know about these land issues mm -hmm. that the Bundy family okay and the stand that they took them that we have families in there family members that are helping other ranching families right mm -hmm. now. That's what this is about, isn't but it? But that's what ranchers always do. Yes, sir. When there's a fire, you don't expect the BLM to save you. Right. You save your neighbors. Yeah. And your neighbors save you. Yeah, that's, that's right. What you do. That's right. That's right. Know, that's just, that's what's going on here in a bigger scale. But yes, if sir. they're here trying to help us, the least we can do is pack them some firewood. Yeah, that's bring right. Bring them some food. You know, at awesome. least let them know you guys aren't, regardless of what you hear in town, there's a big divide in the county. Yeah. between town and outside. Yeah. And that's because so much of town relies on the federal government for their paycheck. Mm -hmm. I've got a wife and a daughter. My wife's a school teacher. Mm -hmm. My little girl's six years old. I want nothing to do with but it. But you know, even if... It, I've got friends that work for the BLM. The BLM or the Forest Service. Mm -hmm. Really good friends of mine. Right. Uh -huh. They have to make a living. They have to feed exactly. their families. Exactly. But they don't need to overreach and they don't need to run me out of business mm -hmm. to feed their family we right. can work together right. to manage this ground sure better than somebody in washington dc saying oh you can't graze that piece of ground because my calendar says it's bogus right they need to have a guy on the ground that's out there horseback not even on a pickup on the road mm -hmm. because the road edges all get grazed get on a horse and follow me up through these canyons mm -hmm. and see grass chest high, literally, mm -hmm. this green, mm -hmm. and water holes that are overflowing. Mm -hmm. Why are we not using it? And if we don't use it, mm -hmm. by July, it's all burned up. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Burned up. Yeah. It was totally went to waste. Mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, we, yeah. do you think we, uh, we can get a positive result out of all this? The positive result we're getting right now is... Awareness. Publicity. Awareness. That's oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Publicity yeah. in the Publicity. fact that when Greg Walden talks about it on the House floor, yeah. right. by gosh, it took something to get his attention. Yeah. And we got his attention. Yes, yeah, sir. I mean, we, meaning. Yes, we. We the people. The we the people. We the people. And the ranchers, yes. You know, and not just the ranchers, because there's, there's people. I do business with people all over the United States. They're calling me, and they know they've been here. They're, We've been there. We've been to that refuge headquarters. It's a tourist attraction. The round barn down here, tourist attraction. Right. You have people come here to hunt, middle of the afternoon. Well, let's go look around. What's this wildlife refuge? Part of the reason I bring them through here is to show government mismanagement. Because they live in Vermont and don't understand. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a national forest. It's a hundred. It's a hundred acres. Yeah, I have a pasture that's six thousand acres. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different. Right. You know, and they just don't understand that you stand here and all the way to that hill, and all the way to that hill is government controlled. Both ways. Yeah. Government controlled. All right. the way, both ways. You can't do anything on it without their permission. Who owns Who owns the dirt? The people own the dirt. Right. This land. The people own all of it. Period. It's the Bureau of Land Management, not the Bureau of Land Ownership. There you go. Boom. And people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't do that on BLM ground. It's not federal ground. They don't own it. They don't. They are managing the resource right. above ground. Mm -hmm. They're managing the grass and the water. Right. Period. Yes, sir. And there's are this you? Hammond thing. They're friends of the family. Yes, sir. My wife's family had been, her dad's 80 years old, and he's been friends with Dwight since Dwight was a little boy. Mm -hmm. My father-in-law grew up. Right, well, on the other 10 miles, the other side of that hill, which is now refuge, was their family ground mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's stuff like that that happens all the time that you don't hear about. Mm -hmm. Hammonds and the BLM aren't the first ones that have had issues. That's what I'm hearing. A lot, a lot of. Uh, I mean, I could give you. Listen, to it. I fight fire in this country in the summertime. I tell you horror stories. Were the Hammonds the first ones you've known, though, that have been charged with terrorism? Absolute first. First that have been charged with anything. That's I've been bad, fighting. Isn't I've it? been fighting fire in a canyon. Had the BLM light a backfire behind me and stick us in a canyon. They don't even get reprimanded. Wow. That was the BLM favorite firefighting tool. Mm. Drip torch. Yeah. Wind and a drip torch. That's how the BLM fights fire. 
They don't even call themselves firefighters anymore. They're fire managers. Fire managers. They just set they the back fires. The fire and after they've set it. Wow. Or you take a fire that we've had a lightning caused fire on a BLM allotment where we had cow calf pairs. We pull up in this dock trailer with three guys horseback, six dogs. We bail out. They've got the road blocked. You can't go in there. It's a safety issue. Really? Mm -hmm. You're going to stop us? And we go. You're going to jail. That's fine. Our cattle will be alive. Cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. And charge through them. Literally charge through them horseback. The cost of doing business, huh? That's, we, that's the what we call of it. Doing business with the BLM. Yeah. We just yeah. charge through them. Fine. We're going to go. We're going to go get our cattle. And we go get them and bring them right down the road. And nobody has ever gotten in trouble for it. Yeah. I've yeah. seen I've seen things that I've seen BLM rigs where you either move it or we're pushing it out of the road with a bulldozer. They'll have a bulldozer making a fire line. The BLM will say you have to stop. I'm not stopping, so you move it or I'm going to push through it. And ranchers will. Mm -hmm. When a guy gets pushed far enough. Yeah. Has this been brewing for decades? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. here and this has been brewing for decades. Mm -hmm. huh? I've only been here 11 years. Just mm -hmm. about 11 years. 11 mm -hmm. years this spring. Yeah. But I came from northern Minnesota where it's National Forest. So it's National Forest Service that you deal with right. instead of Bureau of Land Management. Yeah. The same, same thing. thing. You get a field agent that's got a bad attitude. It's almost impossible to win. Really? And guys get to the point where they say, I'm not being pushed anymore. Yeah. The, in, and it'll, it usually happens on a small enough scale where instead of asking for permission, people just go, just do it. I'm just going to go do it. And, and then. Can you tell me something? Why did you bring the water stay warm. Period. So they yeah. can stay warm. Yeah, just coming together. Fa families helping families right now. Through They're this here thing, doing right? something for us. The least we can do is make sure they got. Would you Would you call this a? Uh, uh, they're They're trying to believe it or not. They're trying to call this an armed insurrection, or would you call this a constitutional crisis? What would you call? I I consider this a peaceful protest. Yeah. I mean, the world that I live in, and it's not needed to be seen on TV, but I've got a meat tag here and I've got Marine Corps Inc. on both arms and I'll be right here and stand, I'll stand right here in the middle of the road. Your jarhead brother? Yeah. I'll stand right here in the middle of the road because they have the right to protest. Yeah. And I came here Monday and I went. Okay, and I'm getting ready to play another video. This one was done by End Times News Report. I will provide links in the uh, box below my YouTube. I want to thank each and every one of the YouTubers out there that are showing true patriotism and helping to get the truth out for what is really going on in Burns, Oregon. Everybody is working together to show truth instead of mainstream media lies, the propaganda that is coming out by BLM agents, federal governments, and local police. I want to thank these individuals for refusing to uh, stand on the wrong side and for oppression of the people. These are pillars in this community. These are big outfits. They're scared of the BLM. We're scared of our government. When did that happen? <laughs> that baffles me. So I just, I hope that we do own this as Harney County, that we get behind this. We do have a federal government that is far exceeding in its grasp. I'll, I'll make this real short. My name is Merle Naruk, and I've been here for 70 years. 
and Dwight Hammond and Steve Hammond are the nicest people that ever walked the foot of this earth. <laughs> people did uh, talk about many of them did talk about local problems including the economic problems here and uh, just to remind you uh, this county is there is the, this 11 percent of unemployment which is twice higher than the average across the nation uh, there is uh, the situation with the government controlling or owning 75 percent of the local ranches and uh, ranching is the main source of income here in this area uh, people do seem to to be wake, waking up this has been needed some time in this community, somebody to stand up and speak out for what needs to be done. So as you can see, there are Harney County residents that are in support of what is going on with the Patriots at the Refuge. I am going and have decided to make a part three so that this video is not as long. To make it easier for you to be able to listen and share. There will be a, a part three to offensive or defensive. You need to ask yourself with the different abuses that you will be hearing and that you have heard, are any of these patriots acting on the offensive? We have previously gone over the difference between offense and defense and the Bureau of Land Management for many, many years across this union have been burning individuals, private property, their livestock, their buildings, their fences. They have caused uh, power poles to be burned. They have terrorized individuals and mass amounts of people. That is an act of terrorism. That is arson in the worst form. And no one is focusing on the proper perspective. The BLM are being used as terrorists against our people all across this union. And there is only one way for us to get it to stop. We must tell them no more. In order to do that, we must stand united 
and stop the infighting. We must stop focusing on one single small issue and unite for the bigger issue because if we do not, if we do not, our entire union will fall. And one day, the place that you call home will be destroyed. The ones you refused to stand against will be responsible for the destruction of your home, your private property, the murder of your animals. And if you refuse to stand now, then you might as well accept that you have made it absolutely acceptable for them to do it to you. Our voices, we must use them to speak out for the oppressed, for the weak, and for the individuals who have been terrorized into silence. We are their voice, just like when Jesus Christ was carrying his cross. He did not scream out for help to carry his cross. Another man spoke out, pointed a man out in the crowd, and told him, go help him carry his cross. That is what we are doing. We are helping our neighbors. We are helping all of the people within the borders of our union to carry their cross and defeat this tyranny that has been so clearly set before each one of us. In Offensive versus Defensive, my video number three, I will be including a video in which a federal judge exposes the Bureau of Land Management conspiracy as well as their unlawful actions and just how corrupt they really are. Thank you. God bless you. Please share this video. Please get the word out for truth. And I would like to thank the individual YouTubers, Ben Time Traveler, Pete Santilli, Resurrect the Republic, End Times. Thank you all for covering the truth and refusing to be blinded by the lies. Thank you. God bless you. And Semper Fidelis.